Hello and welcome everybody to the bi-decadial episode of Some Low Grade Gamers. That's like 20, bi-decade. You know how people do bicentennials, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, bi- bi-decadial. Okay. I made it up. It's copyright for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is your local gaming podcast talking about uh, what's going on in the industry. And I am Tom from Some Kind of Gaming. And as usual, I am joined by the low-grade gamer, Dan, over here. How are you doing, Dan? Good, good. How are we all doing? Yeah, not bad. Can't complain. Can't complain. And the lovely Laura. Hi. How are you doing, Laura? I'm good. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So it's been a little bit of a slow news week this week in gaming, hasn't it? Yeah, it has actually. A bit unfortunate, but we still do have a couple of things to keep us occupied this week. So uh, season two of Halo Infinite has been announced. Finally, something needed to happen on that front. I think feel like uh, interest had to be re-sparked there a little bit. Then we had, of course, Kingdom of Hearts 4 has been announced by Square Enix. Exciting stuff, exciting stuff. And then we're going to go over PvP, which is the latest social media craze for gaming, which is... Uh, look, I'm going to be honest, I know nothing about it. So... It's going to be interesting for me as well as you guys, I hope. So, Let's learn together. Yeah, we're going to learn about that one together. Actually, this first subject I also don't know a whole lot about, but I think Dan over there, if you're watching this podcast, you can probably tell that Dan is a fan of uh, a little game called Halo. Yeah, it looks like it. Mm. Oh, you haven't heard of it, Dan? Oh, nah, that's probably... not sure. Ah. I'm, I... <laughs> I think you were the one that talked about it for like an hour and a half when when uh, Halo Infinite came out, but I could I could be confusing you with someone else. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I've forgotten because you know nothing new had come to the game for so long that I, I forgot about the game. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's go over drop. that. First. <laughs> let's go over that uh, lack of content, if if you will, in Halo Infinite. Now, almost everyone says has a problem with some of the maps in the game, but you don't necessarily agree with them. Is that correct? Yeah, look, I I think overall the maps aren't too bad and aren't realistically the problem. The problem was the lack thereof. So uh, the, the problem is, is if you're going to have smaller maps, which some of these maps are quite tiny, um, it, let's sort of compare it to say modern warfare. So Call of Duty, there's Warzone, yep. and I'm going to compare it with modern warfare uh, mainly because you know rather than the latest two iterations, but I had a lot of experience with modern warfare versus the other two because I think the other two are crap. So it's just just honesty, guys. Honesty. The truth will set you free. The best policy. You can find him at idigitalgames.com if you want to go complain, just so you know. Okay, go nuts. <laughs> I will respond. But... Uh, Nicely. No, I will not. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was about to ask that, but then I felt like I would go on a tangent. Yeah, I'm okay to have constructive uh, criticism back, but um, be prepared to also receive it. I, I think... So as an example, Modern Warfare, if you play the multiplayer, there are multiple maps that you'll hit up. And when I say multiple, it's more than three, Mm -hmm. which was always the problem with Halo Infinite multiplayer, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. There just wasn't enough. It was so tiny and... I think the problem is everybody expected a lot more, but Ooh, I want to yeah. I want to break it down a little bit. Somewhat in Halos or 343 Industries defense, and then I'm going to smash that defense down in about two seconds. Fair so enough. Halo Infinite came out, uh, the multiplayer section anyway, is absolutely free. 
You do not need to put a cent into, uh, into that play mode versus, which a lot of people are comparing it to, Warzone. So, you know, they convert to, to compare it to Warzone, Fortnite, blah, 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 blah. Now, problem with that, Warzone, Fortnite basically have one map each. That, that's all they've got, right? Now, I'm going to focus a little bit more on Call of Duty on this, right? Yes, there are certain sections and you can, they parten out the map and blah, blah, blah. There's one map, maybe two. Yep. Whereas Halo Infinite actually has more. But the problem, and I think what they went for is they went for a completely free avenue, whereas where the campaign was what cost. Whereas yep. the Call of Duty model, as an example, Warzone, while it's their big battle royale multiplayer, well, actually, I can't call it multiplayer because that part's not multiplayer. Multiplayer is different. Their big Warzone battle royale thing is completely free. Uh, or you can get a uh, battle pass to you know increase that cost. In Australia, okay. if you bought the battle pass, it's fourteen ninety five because you need one thousand uh, Call of Duty points. But if you continue to play Call of Duty uh, in Warzone, which I've now got back into now that you know Microsoft announced to take over Activision, you never have to really purchase another battle pass because you actually get those coins through the battle pass again, if that makes sense. So as you're progressing through the battle pass, you're awarded coins. Now, you're awarded, I believe, up to 1,100 coins at the end of a battle pass. And it doesn't matter when you purchase the battle pass for Warzone. So if you've been playing Warzone, and your battle, your battle pass will continue to rank up. You just don't get anything from it. But if you then decide to purchase the battle pass, all of your previous unlocks that you didn't get to unlock because you hadn't paid for it will all unlock in one go. Okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, good. Which, that is, which like is consistent. quite good. And yeah. if, if you are having any internet problems, though, unlock it and then wait a good 10, 15 minutes. Otherwise, you're going to shit flashing on your screen um, nah. while it's catching up. Yeah, but yeah again, no sense. huge issue. It, it basically yeah. means for fourteen ninety five, and if you're dedicated to the game, which a lot of people are, and the Battle Pass adds a lot. You know, like you can get a new gun, you can get new operator skins, you get this, you get that. Halo Infinite's Battle Pass was trying to do the massive battle royale, which isn't that massive, was trying to do the massive battle royale, which, again, not massive. I'm going to say that twice because it really isn't, plus (laughs) the multiplayer side of things, whereas Call of Duty for Warzone only had to focus on the Warzone battle pass, right? While it does have multiplayer aspects to it and you can speed it along using multiplayer as well, the multiplayer arm of the game was paid for. So you had to pay for the multiplayer, not the Battle Royale stuff of Warzone. So I think the biggest difference here in where Halo's gone a bit skew with is they were counting on the campaign to see them through. And the problem with that versus Call of Duty. Like, Call of Duty does not have a campaign, right? Yeah, Regardless no. of what you want to say, <laughs> that's like an hour's worth of gaming and your campaign's done, right? That's not a campaign. That's People bullshit. Don't care about it. That's not what they want. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's not what they want. So, again, they're different, they're different sort of games and they were going for a different thing with each game. So that's why yep. I, I don't know if the comparison between Halo Infinite and Call of Duty, which is what I'm seeing a lot of, is incredibly fair because mm-hmm. they are they were going for different aspects. And it's just another big first person shooter. Yeah. Multiplayer I mean, that, I've got, that, the Halo like, Infinite campaign is about, significantly better than anything well, that Call of Duty has put out. But Halo has always been a a more campaign, campaign focused yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, 100%. I've never owned, I've never owned an Xbox 
you know, my parents didn't buy me every console under the sun when I was younger, but what shit friend, other friends did. What else do you play on an Xbox if not Halo? So I have uh, dabbled, but yeah, I don't ever remember playing online multiplayer. Yeah. Like if at yeah. all. I mean, yeah, back look, then you, know, you had to use an Ethernet cable anyway. So, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I have played it from sort of the get go. I've also been a huge fan of Red vs. Blue. If you haven't seen Red vs. Blue, you need to watch it. It is really funny and a very great take on the funny side of Halo. It's basically, and I know I'm going on a tangent here, but it's bloody hilarious by Red Rooster. You need to watch it. Not Red Is Rooster, it a food YouTube? place. Yeah, so <laughs> they started off as a YouTube uh, a YouTube thing and they actually got so popular that they actually managed to sell DVDs. And I was <laughs> I, I bought the full season. Uh, That's off. funny. As- yeah, so basically what they are is they bring multiple Halo characters, Master Chief, into a multiplayer arena and basically yep. pretend that they're talking. So okay. and they give them all different personalities and then they fight differently. And it's it's basically literally the red team versus the blue team, and they talk about strategies on how to win and blah blah blah. But completely- it sounds like Paramount Plus didn't have to spend millions and millions of dollars no. to make it entertaining. No. It's it's an absolute parody of it, but it is it is bloody yeah. gold. You gotta watch it. But again, I, I still think that the comparison while fair in some regards is is unfair because they were going for uh, for a different route now in saying that the content that they have released like i I have not jumped back into the halo well actually that's a lie i did i did two days ago jump back into the halo infinite campaign to re you know just to see what has happened have has there been any update that you know, it's potentially gone under the radar and I haven't seen or blah, blah, blah. So I jumped into it. Now, I finished Halo, the, the Halo Infinite campaign, probably in the first two or three days of it being released. Okay. And Yeah, it's not long. It's only like 10 hours, right? Oh, I, I, I'd done my back in at that time. So I uh, was basically only able to lay in bed and play Halo. So yeah. Silver linings. Yeah. I put a lot of hours in. Like you could make it a little bit longer by, you know, driving or doing this or doing that, blah, blah, blah. But there is nothing new to the campaign. Yeah. They've not added anything else in. And not only that, yeah. they've done nothing for the multiplayer. The battle pass sucks, especially what people are upset about. Yeah, oh, the battle pass sucks, especially in comparison to Warzone. Yeah. Even Fortnite's battle pass, Apex Legends battle pass, like it's like they didn't learn from any of the like realistically, those are the three top ones. You play Apex yep. Legends, you play Fortnite, or you play Warzone. Yeah, like, they're the well, let's not even discuss Battlefield. Uh, what's Battlefield? But, uh, what is what is that? Yeah, it uh, had a Nobody. pretty average release. That, that game, I guarantee you, I'll put money on it that that game will be free to play by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, they real yeah. people thought they botched Halo release yeah. by like staggering it and still not having content. Co-op, people are still waiting for co-op. I believe co-op has uh, now been released. Ah, it has. Oh, okay, that's good. You can tell I don't really keep up. I with, don't know uh, if it's. Like because that. I do, I don't know if it's because I am a, a flight tester or a beta tester, but it did come yep. up. It did come up two days ago when I did jump in. Okay. So I don't yep. know if that has anything to it. So if you are listening to oh, this and you don't have it, that I, I didn't it's specifically just a say. Bit too late, you know, like it is I mean, very late. I've finished the campaign. I get that they wanted something out. They wanted it to be released along with the Xbox series of systems. And then it had like a year delay. And I, I get that they just wanted to, you know, 
bring something out. But I- no, you're better off making it a two-year delay and actually having the full game because, yeah. like, it's kind of flopped now because of that. Like, imagine it would have had so much potential to do truly amazing if the bits were all there. Yeah, I highly the, agree with you. Though. Problem, yeah, it's up. The problem they got is I don't think they know where to take the Halo series. You have yeah, do the they TV want to show? go full blown multiplayer or do they want to just focus yeah. on the campaign? Or, yeah, or if you're of... going to do both, you need to split it up. Yep. Different, yeah, that's different true. teams. Yeah, need yeah, to... just make two different games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's that seems like what it is anyway, you know, especially yeah, with that staggered that's, release. That, the problem is that's not how it's set up in, in, in your, you know, dashboard. It's not how it's set up in the back. Like, yeah, they need to separate yeah, it's it, not. and they need yeah. to they need to separate their teams. The problem is they have got, they've literally got no idea where they're taking the Halo platform, game, whatever. Like this IP, they've got no idea where they're taking it. The TV show, which I am still attempting to watch. Just, yeah, apparently Master Chief's yeah. butt. Master Chief gets naked. Yes, Woo! you get to see his chiseled butt. Very awesome. Chiseled. Just the butt? Yeah. Wow, well, I mean, they want it accessible for... Yeah, how much do you want them to show? Yeah, come on, Laura. I mean, mine's pretty chiseled mean, like what? that. <laughs> if, if you really want, I can take it out. Not sure it'd be good on podcast, but... Uh, <laughs> What is it? Rule 14 of the internet that we won't get into here today? Yeah, mine's very chiseled just like that. But yeah, I'm <laughs> glad to hear that. So, so oh, I'll send you a picture later, Tom. But oh, man, they, appreciate it. Yeah. they just don't know what the hell they're doing with the TV series. And the it's really disappointing because it is a TV series that I really really want to love like i really loved supernatural the tv show growing up it's the best tv show oh, how good is that oh, it's I the best tv show, show to ever live right everybody else who doesn't like it. it you 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 something's wrong with you but, i love the first few seasons yeah then that, it it gets it got weird it gets, yeah but i'm still into Don't it we all yeah yeah but i mean it's nice. like lost you know like what's a polar bear doing on a tropical island guys come on yeah. Okay. Yeah. That did get weird, but I feel yeah. like that got weirder than Supernatural. Yeah. Supernatural was always a bit weird. Yeah. So yeah. it was That's kind of like okay yeah. that it got weird, but Lost was like not that weird, and then all of a sudden it was weird. Yeah. No. Anyway, Lost, we're not Lost talking is, about Lost. Lost I guess. is crap in comparison. Not sure it's uh, even fair to bring up in regards <laughs> to Supernatural. It doesn't make any sense. Just <laughs> idiotic, well, if you ask me. There's something right? wrong with you. Supernatural is a like fantastic it. TV show and uh, is, is above, above reproach. When they met God, it just went... Yeah, it was a bit weird. Uh, yeah, see? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, they went a bit weird. But anyway, you guys have made me uh, digress. The, yeah. the, I really wanted to love this TV show, and that's why, I've, again, I sat down and watched the third episode. Yeah. But to be honest, the TV show and the game in its current status, they're both just as crap as each other. So Yeah, they, they, they in, don't have an identity, do they? No. And in saying all of that, now we've got season two that's come out. It took me that mm-hmm. long to get to this part of the, the news. Which brings, it's called Lone Wolves. It's got a new Battle Pass system, which from my understanding and the way it looks, it's basically like a Warzone Battle Pass. Okay. <laughs> which, while it's a little bit copycat, it is exactly what they needed to do, I think, mm. in order to get people reinvigorated. Because, mm-hmm. like I said, if you're a committed Warzone player, you basically pay fourteen ninety five. That's Australian, by the way. So if you're in the US or elsewhere, and you go, "That's oh, not the price," but blah, blah, blah. it is here, and it's cheaper elsewhere, of course. But the, it looks like they've gone for that same system, which I think is appropriate for people who are like absolutely dedicated to the game, 
play mm-hmm. out on such a regular basis that it helps to boost the amount of players playing, which is so important, especially nowadays. You look at like Battlefield is a fantastic example. There's like a thousand people on that game at any one time. Yeah, it's not know, enough. Which, yeah, is nothing. It is completely insignificant to say even Warzone when it was at when it was at its peak. Like, uh, yeah, the numbers not even close. So I think the way they're going is they're taking a lot of the good stuff from Warzone for this new season and they're putting it in. And I think I think that's exactly what they need. That's uh, what they wanted. I remember when they were releasing this game or when all the hype was behind it, they came out and said, this is going to be the Halo game for the next 10 years. Like, we're not doing anything else. We're just going to keep supporting this one, hence Infinite, you know? I think there was even word about it being the last Halo game ever because Mm. they just want to continually support this. Well, they need to release something like that then if that's the case, isn't it? Yeah. Because people just aren't going to play the 10-hour campaign over and over and over again infinitely. No, no. Yeah, exactly. Mm. They They need more support. But my question is, is that still the plan? after the Activision acquisition? I, I, oh, would yeah. say, I would say it definitely is because what did I think it would allow them to do is while Activision Blizzard have a lot of holes, like, you know, Warzone updates are, like, huge. They're the size of countries. So yep. while that Warzone and Activision have a lot to learn, but they also have a lot of knowledge they can impart to three, four, into three industries mm-hmm. and what they've done. So what I'm hoping is the acquisition actually helps to boost Infinite's status in terms of stuff they're getting, like they're getting new maps. Now, I don't know how great these maps are going to be, but... Yep. That's this something, is, though. This is, in my eyes... This is their last chance for the multiplayer to take off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is is this next battle pass? And if they stuff up season two, Halo Infinite, you now mark my words, is going to be, you know, abs- absolutely dead. gone. Like, yeah, it, yeah, it's going to be a dead system. They need to release yeah, something for the campaign. I think that's okay now that they have this. Now that they have Activision, like maybe they should just focus on Halo being a campaign orientated game and then have all the multiplayer stuff with your Call of Duties. Like that makes sense to me. Right? Yeah. So I think, it does I think in, in some respects, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, but why not? Like, why not um, have both? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they I should, mean, if they, they can should, make both successful, then yeah, they, they do it. should be able if to you've make got to focus both. on one, then do it. Focus. Sorry, we talked over it. Yeah, I didn't no. hear what either of you said because <laughs> you said it at exactly the same time. <laughs> I, I think, like, I, I agree with Tom in in a lot of respects, but I also think that the Halo franchise has a lot of cool things that they could really lean on. Mm-hmm. to, you know, that make it very different to what Warzone would be. Like, if if the Halo Infinite campaign was, I mean, the, I mean, if the campaign was better, I'd like that too. But if the Halo multiplayer was better, I can tell you right now, I'd be playing that over Warzone regardless of what my mates were doing because mm-hmm. I prefer Halo. Like, I like Warzone. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Warzone. Now, Halo's got lore, though you know. That's what I'm getting at. Like they've got the, yeah. they got different guns. They got the tanks. They got wraiths. They yep. got ghosts. Uh, yep. You know all, all, all like, the aliens and stuff yeah, like that. Like like the Covenant. Just, then we got the brutes, yeah. the Atriox. Yeah, yeah like, that's just, what that's what draws me to it more so than 
something like yeah like warzone or fortnite exactly so there's going to be such a huge market of people that are drawn more to the history and the lore and more substance behind it Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. like if they're both offering something that's similar a lot of people are going to gravitate towards that instead Mm. and they they need they need a staple first party product like you have a look at nintendo nintendo are fantastic at doing their own ips like don't yes. get me wrong some some of it has some issues like arceus has some issues i'm gonna keep bringing that up because i know tom hates Thank it. You know, that's <laughs> game freak though yeah take they a like shot distinct, every time they like to distinguish themselves it's nintendo let's be honest it, it's the pokemon company so it's nintendo but game if we have a, and you have a look at playstation like Sony does a fantastic yeah. job of their first party yeah, stuff as well. It it's because they actually, I mean, I don't want to get into this whole like, it's not, it's not really console wars though, is it? It's more like company wars, mm. but PlayStation support their studios and they, they push them to do things and be better. Whereas Microsoft is notorious for just buying stuff and, not doing anything with it or doing yeah. minimal things with it. So I I just feel like Microsoft and this is this isn't coming straight from my mouth. This is coming from people I know who have worked within Microsoft itself, uh, a couple of them. So and that and that's their issue with the company. Uh which makes sense. I, I understand that. I get it. You know, yeah, I agree. We, we know the history rare is obviously a big one. Um Having said that, Sea of Thieves is, is fantastic, but that, that's a whole different ball game. Um, yeah, so Microsoft really, I know what you're trying to say, Dan, it does really need to just support these studios and have them do well. Yeah, and we've discussed this before. Microsoft, they need more of those, you know, first-party exclusives. Yeah, stop just buying shit and mm. focus now. Now that you've got Activision and Blizzard, well, once that, is finalized. And Bethesda, don't forget Bethesda. And Bethesda. Focus, <laughs> focus on doing better. That's yeah. what you need to do. Focus on doing but better. Like, we like won't Halo act- game should be as big as Destiny 2, bigger, but yeah. it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's easy, easy. Yeah, it should be. No, no, it's really dropped off. I think the interesting part about these acquisitions is that we're not actually going to know f- for the next five to 10 years what Microsoft is actually doing with them because mm-hmm. all the games that they've like games don't happen overnight. They don't mm-hmm. happen in a year or two, you know, yeah. all the games that are going to come out in the next five or so years, these companies were probably already working on mm-hmm. before the purchase. Mm-hmm. So it's not until after that, that we're going to realize, okay, you know, this is, this is what's happening. You know, like mm-hmm. there's so many good IPs there. And I'm just afraid about a lot of them dying. Like I'm a huge mm. platformer fan. So I would love for another Crash Bandicoot or mm-hmm. another Spire of the Dragon, you know, yeah, like, that's it. and Microsoft own those now. But, you know, if history is anything to go off, I'm, I'm going to be a disappointed, Matt. Mm. Yeah. Only time will tell. Yeah. Only time will tell. Anyways, we should move on now. That's enough about Halo. Get excited for season two. Hopefully it's better. That's about, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good summary. Mm. All right. So next up, we had Square Enix had a presentation the other day celebrating the 20th anniversary of Kingdom of Hearts. And they announced a couple of things. First of all, they announced a couple of mobile titles. That's, that's cool. That's about all anyone has to say about that. Yep, nice mobile game, sweet. Uh, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of tempted to give it a go, but then I've got so many PlayStation games and so many Switch games and so many PC games to play that, like, do I want to open up that can of worms and have so many mobile games to play as well? Yeah, it's just it's just not for me. Good on. If, if you're looking forward to it, I'm not trying to take anything away, but, yeah, you know, mobile. Anyways, the big thing from that presentation, the best, the most exciting thing about the presentation was that Kingdom of Hearts 4 was announced. 
Now, I don't know if anyone remembers, but the gap between Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3 was like 10 years. It was a long time in the making, and this isn't. It isn't that long. That's so, nice. Yeah, fans are pretty, like, yeah, they're a bit taken back, a bit shocked. It came out of nowhere. Nobody was expecting it, again, because the last one took so long. Everyone was like, eh, you know, like, is it going to happen? You kind of just, like, give up after you get one, don't you? You're like, ah, well, I'll be 40 by the time the next one comes exactly. out. Exactly. And- that is a scary truth. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you might be 30 by the time we get Breath of the Wild 2. Oh, my God. Anyways. <laughs> I will be. Number will three be. also, like, rounded out the story quite nicely. So I feel like that's a big reason why people are shocked about a number four happening. It looks truly epic, though, doesn't it? It's come a long way. Like, those, it almost looks like, you know, it's, it's that. It's definitely a next-gen game, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't actually know what engine they're using, but, ooh, that thing looks nice. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, they've. It's, it's come a long way from those uh, cartoony graphics on the PlayStation 2, which actually lend itself really well to the King of Hearts games, you know, being Disney and cartoons. It's kind mm. of their thing. Pixar, that was that was their thing. The cartoon characters yeah. that feature in the game work re- worked really well with the cartoony graphics. Exactly, yeah. But, well, that... That actually leads to a very good question. Like, what are they going to do with this? The piece of footage we saw was Sora in the real world. It looks like, yeah, the real world. Yeah, it did. Like, it had a different name, but yeah. it was like humans and stuff. It looks like Tokyo or something. Yeah, it did. Yeah, 100%. And it was like big city. So that in itself is very intriguing because, I mean, I don't, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a bunch of Disney properties that feature cities. But nothing like, you know, comes to mind per se. But my biggest question, and I feel like the biggest question on a lot of people's minds is what Disney properties are going to feature in this game? Because we've like Disney is, you know, the Microsoft of the of the movie industry, isn't it? Mm-hmm. They just they own everything now. They yeah. they bought up a hell of a lot of stuff. I can answer that for you. Go on. They are going to put everything. You're going to see The Incredibles. You're going to see Toy Story. You're going to see Iron Man. You're going to see The Hulk. Mm -hmm. They're just going to go full Hulk. Obi-Wan. It's a joke. It's only because they do it in in, in everything they got. They just try. It could be possible, though. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, they own... Star Wars and Marvel now. Mm -hmm. That's and Fox. (laughs) Fox is a big Uh, one. A lot of people don't realize how big a deal them owning Fox is. Oh no, it's huge. They own like literally pretty much everything. So, uh, so okay, that's actually a very good point you make. The hand to hand is is Sora going to go meet Peter Griffin? Oh my god! Or Homer Simpson? Dude, I hope so. Because that would be pretty cool. Or Bender. <sighs> okay, these are actually some pretty exciting prospects. Those here. would be, yeah, I would be really down for those crossovers. Yeah. Because they're also still like cartoon characters, you know, so it kind of like fits in. It's still like a little bit left field, but it kind of fits in like a better than like, I don't know, the Avengers or something. Yeah. Uh, I saw, I, I can't remember who said it, but somebody was hoping that it doesn't feature Disney and Marvel just because there are so many games that are, are based around those those mm. properties, you mm. know? Like, I mean, Dan can attest for how many Star Wars games there are. Like, Oh, man. There is Not enough. so many. Not enough. <laughs> And they're all available on all current systems as well. They're all available on iDigitalGames.com, yes. that's for sure. We have yeah, a Star Wars category. <laughs> the first games he loaded up onto that website was so funny. Um, yeah, he is a fan. But, well, okay, that let's let's put this question to you, Dan. Like, would you like to see Sora go into the world of Star Wars? No. I, yeah. I think I, Kingdom of Hearts 4 
should be, and I hope it is, its own entity, its own mm -hmm. style, its own individual thing. I, I, while I love crossover stuff, right, like one of my favourite movies of all time is now the latest Spider-Man. And for those that oh, haven't yeah. seen it... It's the, really good. It's really there good. There are no it's, crossovers at all, if you haven't seen it. Yeah, none. Spoiler alert. Yep. Spoiler alert. Mm. Like, seriously, I, stop listening. Stop listening for at least 10 seconds. Yeah. The fact that all three of them were in that movie was literally the best thing ever for me. And Matt Murdock was in there as well. For those yeah, of you who yeah, don't that know who that pretty... is, that's Daredevil. Daredevil, yeah, yeah. It, to me, that was absolutely epic and awesome. But it made sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like it, it made plot holes, but oh yeah, there's it plot holes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it it made sense to a certain degree, and everybody wanted that. There is not one person in the world that did not want all three of those guys in the same movie. And if you didn't, again, something wrong with you. That was awesome. Me seeing Tobey Maguire again. Yeah, I know. Yeah, absolutely epic. I love Tobey Maguire. I loved him as Spider Man. I love that scene in front of the train where he's like, "Yeah, shit." <laughs> From the original movies, just a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely epic. And so, I really hope they limit anything else. So, do you want you want Kingdom of Hearts to stay? what it's always been with the Pixar side of Disney. Yeah, like... Be... Sometimes it's better to keep things separate I, I, rather than combining everything. I fully agree with you guys. I'm just trying to be devil's advocate and, mm. like, understand our way of thinking a bit better and hopefully the, the listeners can understand our way yeah. of thinking too. Homer Simpsons, though, he's, I'll invite him. Oh, look, there are certain things from Disney that I would love to see, like a new Simpsons hit and run. That would be awesome. Oh, <laughs> I would say all over that. Fish. Simpsons one and then a Futurama one. That would be mm -hmm. absolutely awesome. I would buy is both of those. Is there a Futurama game? Oh, there I, is. I don't think there is. There, there is a Futurama game. Oh, uh, there but is. It's, it's not worth commenting about. The, well, they the should Simpsons hit and run is just iconic. Like that, that oh, was sorry. forget fantastic. Grand Theft Auto. That thing's that's yeah. where it's at. Simpsons, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, <laughs> if they redid one of those, oh, <laughs> I'd be all in. Um, yeah, but at the same time, limit limit what your stuff is doing. Like, if you have a look at Sony right now, and uh, I'm talking about Sony Films, right? The, the Sony arm of that. They yep. are leaning on Marvel so hard mm -hmm. that it is cringeworthy. It yes, is like, it literally have, have, is. You, have you seen Morbius? Have you seen Morbius? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. don't, I don't want to spoil anything. Oh, I'm not going to say anything at all, is, but it is what, cringy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's like, guys. Quickly, come on! Stop. Anything yeah. Marvel? That's exactly what I thought. Just, just give me something. What's, what's, what have we got in the bank? That's Marvel. Let's just release it tomorrow, and let's just mm. chuck in some stuff from random movies. Yep, that's it. That's mm -hmm. the one. That's that's what they're doing. They've gone, man. Disney's done really well with this. We didn't do so good, but Disney's done really well. Let's jump on this Marvel Try train again. and yep. just. Go for gold. That's what Sony are doing in their films arm. And while you make fantastic games and, you, and your Spider-Man movie, the latest one, that was absolutely epic. That was the, one of my mm -hmm. favourite movies of all like time. I also like the second Venom. I like Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Venom's good too. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Venom. Uh, Artie's I, fantastic. Massive mm. fan of that Spider-Man movie though. That to me ranks way up there. But yeah, Kingdom of Hearts. Okay, so maybe just, maybe just, Square Enix can take something from Sony's film universe and not 
lean on the Marvel side of Disney. And let's just, I, I, I agree with you guys. I would rather there not be Marvel, there not mm-hmm. be Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I think it was Kingdom of Hearts 3, don't shoot me if it was number two. Uh, we had Pirates of the Caribbean. And that, that did work. Uh, I thought that was entertaining. I, I thought they had uh, some of the original Disney characters in that. Am I it, thinking wrong? So, Dan, have you never played a Kingdom of Hearts game? I have, but I, it was a long time ago. Yeah, so Sora just goes to, basically just goes to different Disney worlds. So you've got uh, a big one is Hercules. Like oh, he's yeah, always that's in there. right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He's just like a big villain in them. Yeah, and then, that's right. And you know, then he'll go to the world of Toy Story and then blah, 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 blah. And um, yeah, yeah. Um, Donald Duck and Goofy are always I was going to call him Daffy for a Daffy second, but is, yeah, Donald. Donald Daffy's and... Donald's sister or? Daffy is Looney Tunes. Yeah, Daffy's, yeah, Daffy's Looney, 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 Tunes. Looney Tunes. He's a different, he's oh, a different yeah, guy. Oh, yeah, of course. Daisy, yeah, yeah. Daisy Duck. Is Daisy Duck? That's mm, who I'm yes. thinking. Thank but Daffy you. and Goofy are regulars, Donald. huh? Donald and Goofy. Donald and Goofy are <laughs> regulars. <laughs> yes, that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So yeah, yeah. Like, now I am thinking. Yeah, I am thinking right. It has been many many years since I played a. Yeah. Film of Hearts. So I, I think, yeah. I think parts of the Caribbean worked in it, but. I, I don't really want to see them dip into their live action category much more. Than no, that, you know? yeah, it's no. like Disney they... has Ice Age now as well because I'm pretty sure they were all Fox. Um, oh yeah, properties. That would be awesome. So just yeah, I just want them the to keep it. Guy. I want to keep them yeah. cartoon. That's what I would yeah, enjoy. Yes, keep it like that. Cartoon. Yeah, but like yeah. don't cartoon. don't branch out into the into live action other stuff. IPs. Like yeah. just keep it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep it as is. If that you could do some new Disney stuff like Soul. Have, have you seen oh, yeah, yeah. the Soul movie? Onward? That is that's really good. Has, I would love. I would love for Sora um, and Goofy to visit the world of Soul. That would be Enchant- great. Mm. Was it Enchanter? Enchants? Yeah, Enchanto or something. Yeah, Enchanto. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah so um, what's the one Moana? with the sea monsters? Moana. Moana was good. fantastic. That yeah. would be yeah, that great to see. That oh, last dragon. Welcome. Oh, Raya and the Last the Dragon. The Raya, wait, no, but no, Raya and the Last Dragon has to be a oh, whole yeah. video game in itself. Yeah, that yeah Raya and the Last Dragon. So if that they've that, got those. I said it as soon as I watched that movie. I was like, that needs to be a video game. Like all of the action scenes were like, I, you could, I could picture myself like playing it. Yeah, it's literally separated into levels as mm-hmm. well. That movie. It's it's perfect for a video game. Yeah, so is. keep that for its own one. There you go, Disney. You can have that one for free. Hey, whoa, there whoa! You, go. you got enough <laughs> money. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry, you got to pay Laura for it. Yeah, you Chuck can pay me. Oh, okay. Sorry. Chuck us a couple <laughs> meal. We'll go away. He's like, it's not for free. Uh, <laughs> so I think the best thing about this announcement is we've had a bunch of game announcements that we haven't covered on the podcast simply because they are just like, here's this game coming. There's a picture like the Witcher 4 and the new Tomb Raider. Like, it's just like this game is being made. Yeah. Great. It's still like probably like six to 10 years away, guys. Like stop doing this. Yeah. But maybe it's not for the consumer. Maybe it's like also to, you know, get people on board to help make it. Uh, that is an advertising call. Sometimes what they do is they do that sort of stuff early for shareholders. Yes. Because mm-hmm. that is a lot well. of the time as a shareholder, you're sitting there going, all right, where's my shares going? What's happening? Why are there mm-hmm. no new announcements? Uh, and like, you know, I, I invest in shares myself. And if I don't see a new announcement or something going on, I'm sort of researching what's happening with the company. So... Mm. You know, a lot of the time when they do this, it's also just to prop up investor um, support and interest and all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, I, I agree. I hate it when something is announced and it's like, I, I, I got to sit here for four years. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you just get nothing as well. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Like we're not going to see a trailer for 
the Witcher 4 or the new Tomb Raider game or anything for a really, really long time. Mm-hmm. There's already memes about people being 50 by the time Tomb Raider comes out. I got announced like last week. <laughs> like, people are already willing to wait 20 years for it, you know. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm excited about both of those games. Um, and it's funny that um, CD Projekt Red have already said that the development of Witcher 4 is going to be extremely different from their last game, Ooh. Thou Who Shall Not Be Named. Wow. Mm, yes, uh, it's probably a different team that. That's a whole nother kettle of fish. But yeah, I I liked that Kingdom of Hearts Four actually had a trailer. It had some gameplay in the trailer, mm-hmm. which also looks extremely exciting. By the way, those moves. Oh yeah, hell yeah! It looks really fluid, really nice. It kind of actually reminded me of the Spider Man game a little bit. Yeah, in a way with the like swinging. You know what? With I'm swinging. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, swing <laughs> through the city as well mm-hmm. and running on all the buildings. Yeah, no, no, I'll give you that. No, I'll give you that. Parkour. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Spider-Man is basically just the ultimate parkour. Simulator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want a parkour simulator? Just pick up Spider-Man. It's the best. But yeah, that's the most exciting thing. So this game's obviously closer than what would usually be when it's announced. Not that Square Enix needs to impress investors because their their lineup for this year is huge already. Um, Not that it's coming out this year, but, you know, they're they're doing stuff, basically. They're doing a lot of things. Yeah, so that's exciting. I'm I'm excited for King of Hearts 4. Probably going to play all of the, or at least the three mainline ones again in preparation for it because I think it was the... Ah, first or second one. I only ever played at friends' houses and not not the full way through because my parents would buy it for me. I would have played more of them now if they released the cloud versions in Australia, just saying. Nah, screw those cloud versions. They're annoying. We'll just pick it up natively on the PS5. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, the final final topic, unless anyone else has anything to add about Kingdom Hearts. That's a no. I'm, I'm heart out. I'm going to take the silence as a no. <laughs> I'm heart out. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, Dan, tell us about PvP. Well, PvP, Tom, and uh, being a gamer, you should you should probably know this, but that just means player, yeah, player versus player. player. That's, yeah. that's yeah, what yeah, that okay. means. Tell us about yeah. the social media enterprise. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can Great name, by the way. So... Yeah, look, okay, this this is not, for those listening, this is not a sponsored ad. I've had no communication with PvP whatsoever. Now, the reason I start off with that is because all you see at the moment in, in feeds from uh, uh, GameStop, from other gaming places, is you see advertising for investing in PvP. So this is not advocating to invest in PvP, nothing. This is just a discussion about what PvP is. Yeah. So oh, to keep it, thank God. I I saw in this I saw in the screen. I thought I had a grey hair, but then I pulled it out, and it was just one of my cat's hairs. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, you forget <laughs> that we're recording this. People yeah. can hear what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> You got a microphone there. That's yeah. you talk. Continue. We um, hear. That's yeah. <laughs> that's usually what happened in real yeah. life. Anyway, look, yeah. I thought I had gray hair for a second. Nah, Laura has no gray hairs. Everyone, it's it was okay. just my cat's hair. Everyone, yeah. he doesn't have gray hairs either. No, but it's lighter than mine. Anyway, maybe mm. it's a guy named Greg. Mm. <laughs> so I'm watch out. I'm old Greg. I'm old Greg. <laughs> so. I, I'll take that again. Thanks, Laura. So PvP is basically a new social media form, but for gamers. It's not primarily for gamers. It's not blah, blah. It's for gamers. If you don't game, you're not interested in PvP. Plain and simple. Why? Because it is only only discuss gaming. So basically, um, imagine... If you discuss anything else, you kicked off the platform? 
No, nah, just no one will follow you. No, nobody's nobody's going to talk to you. So basically, think of PVP like this. It's like let's let's compare it to Facebook because everybody knows what Facebook is. Okay. Yep. It's basically like having a Facebook wall on PVP, but everybody, you see everybody's posts. So not just people you follow or blah, blah, blah. You see everybody's posts. That's the main screen. Every single person on the platform. On the platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, they can't filter it in any way. You can. So the okay. main, the main, the front section, main section is is basically you see the the guys from PVP posting, so they might post uh, updates to the social networking and, and other updates, and they add um, games that you can say that you're playing and other bits and pieces in, in built in that. And you see, you know, basically such and such is streaming now, or here's a highlight from from Joe Blow. And all those sorts of things. I originally thought I was going to really dislike this idea, but I actually really quite enjoy it. And I actually probably use PVP more now than I do any other app on my phone. Mm. Interesting. So I again, am intrigued by it. I'm not I'm not advocating like I'm not telling you to invest in it. So and I say that because a lot of people are slamming them because they, they keep asking for investments. I'm not, I'm not saying invest in it. I'm saying I really genuinely like the idea. And they've released an update just recently, which is exactly what you're talking about, Tom, in, in filtering, basically. So yep. similar to Facebook in when you like a page or like a, uh, some banana on there. And you can actually change it to your feed so basically there's the pvp community feed then you've got your own individual one where it's the people that you follow and yep. those those posts uh, appear on that tab okay. which is actually that's really cool yeah yeah well i mean that's how you filter twitter and instagram and those yeah. kind of things isn't it yeah. by people you're actually following yeah but I, I like the idea of the community tab as the main one because it mm -hmm. gets you to see people that you potentially haven't seen before. And mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. you'll just see a comment and you'll go, actually, that, that's a pretty funny comment. Or oh, that's that's pretty cool. The other day, uh, because I'm, I'm really hilarious, I posted a photo of, uh, I don't know if you guys would have seen it, because I think I post it to Twitter as well. But is this the Prime Minister? Our Prime Minister. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's we called, did see that. I actually really enjoyed that. It's called Avoiding Duty. And it looks like he's on a Call of Duty Activision thing. Because he yep. just likes taking photos. That's his thing. He 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 likes <laughs> doing that. And uh, I thought that was hilarious. So I put that on PvP. But it's just those sorts of things. All the all everything gaming related. And if you just want to focus on gaming stuff like uh, me personally i am not a huge fan of facebook no uh, i agree no, me neither. i purposely do not have any friends on there i just have pages that i like uh and mm -hmm. other bits and pieces See, so, that's that's better than what i've got because i just i have all all of my friends who i added when i was like you know 15 or what however old I was when Facebook came out and now they're there forever and it's annoying and I'm not going to go through and delete like 500 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I just I I really, really, see all of my friends that have glowing careers and babies husbands and, and babies and I'm like, video games. See, yeah. I just don't care what freaking John Smith is eating for dinner now when yeah. he's like 28. Like, I'm sorry, John. I didn't care when you're 15. I also don't care now. Sorry, dude. I don't sorry, care John. that freaking Jacinta is going out and to this club tonight with Annabelle. Or, I'm just making names up, by the way. I don't That's know any of these. Very specific. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think that was even an Annabelle in my whole school. But yeah, you know what I mean? I just don't care. It is yeah. good if you go traveling, though. I will I will admit that uh, adding people from overseas who you might lose contact with it is. That's it, its only strength. Yes, it is its only strength. So yeah. maybe we would have more in common with PVP now. Yeah. Well, that's, that's sort of the thing. So I, I uh, a streamer that we've had on here in the past, Insanity Secure, for those uh, that don't know, I actually got her to jump on, uh, jump on uh, with me to mm-hmm. have a look because I wanted another perspective on it. And she sort of feels the same way that I do is that it's sort of turning into our preferred social media. Uh, mm-hmm. did, there's, there's a couple of caveats though. Like this is uh, for all intents and purposes, this is still technically in beta. So yep. there are certain things that don't make a whole lot of sense or sometimes don't work correctly. Like for example, if you message somebody and they message you back, you don't actually get a notification. Now I okay. don't know if what's going on there, but I, I am using the brand new iPhone 13. So you would think that it would. Oh man, sometimes work. I don't even get Facebook notifications. So oh, I never get Facebook notifications, but I'm just saying what just just <laughs> some small bits and pieces that yeah. just road bumps. Yeah. But they also make it really easy to squad up. So if you're into Warzone or in, into any games mm-hmm. where you can squat up, you can actually look for people using PvP. So it's, okay. it's, it's pretty cool from that point of view. Mm-hmm. And, like, yes, it does help you connect with other gamers really quickly. You can also put up there what game you're playing. So there, I haven't played around with that part of the feature yet, but they do have over 60, I believe, Games where you can actually say, I'm playing this game at the moment. Uh, and you can post Only highlights. 60. What's that? Only 60. Yeah, because the, the way they do it is very much like it integrates. So it's not yeah. just I'm playing this game and nothing else happens. It's actually I'm playing this game and you can actually interact with that. So okay. you can, from my understanding, is you can actually use that to squat up and, okay. and connect and that sort of thing. So there's a few cool features uh, about it that you can, yeah, basically find squads. If you don't have mates that play the same game as you, you know, like, like I said earlier, all my mates play Warzone. Nobody plays Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. Now, we originally stopped playing Warzone for a long time until the Microsoft uh, recent acquisition. And we've all started to feel a little bit more comfortable playing again. So a bunch of us have jumped back on. But me personally, if Halo Infinite really pulled something out of the bag with season two, then I would personally shift. And then I wouldn't have anybody to play with, especially locally. So for me, it would be really cool to be able to reach out and find you know players that i could play with on a regular basis to play halo infinite because i i definitely would prefer if halo took off to play that over warzone so now here are the bad things i guess you could say about the platform so you can put highlights up the Mm -hmm. problem that i found with these highlights is it takes a bit of time to load like to upload them now okay the highlight i used in particular for mine was a very heavy upload i I guess you could say It, it was quite it was quite big but at the same time this was a this was a Xbox recording. Mm-hmm. So I, I think if, if people are going to be sharing stuff from Xbox, Nintendo, PlayStation, it needs to be more cohesive and upload a lot quicker. I, I've just found that their upload speeds are a little bit slower than what I would like them to be. Now, again, potentially I'm, I'm nitpicking there, but I, I just... I just didn't feel it was good enough uh, mm-hmm. for what they're trying to do. I 
I also think they they should expand part of the PVP service. So what I think would be cool is to not just say what games you're playing, but as a way to integrate socially, it would be really cool if I could say what games I actually owned. And I, I'm not just saying games that you could play That's together. intimidating. together. I'm, I'm saying like there's a app called, uh, I think it's called Game Eye, and you can basically mm-hmm. put in your whole collection of games. Yep. Into that. Now, that collection is only for you and for only you to see. But it would be really cool to find people that, for example, Tom, we only by happenstance know that we both like Jack and Daxter. That is not mm-hmm. a game that we talk about in a normal setting on a regular basis. Like, there's not many people you find that you go, wow, they like Jack and Daxter as well, right? You don't mm-hmm. bring it up in random combos. So to be able to click on somebody's game. Do you like Jack and Daxter? Yeah. <laughs> no? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Not interested. No, no, I don't like her. Bugger off, mate. No interest in you. So (laughs) it would be cool that because it is a platform just for gamers, if it had some additional features like that. Now, it's not to say that they won't won't add it down the line. Like, they've already added two or three, maybe four big features since I downloaded the app, like, two or three weeks ago. Like my feed, as an example, which is what, uh, again, what you said earlier, that wasn't a thing when I first signed up. Yep. And and that made me not uncomfortable, but it made me like, well, why am I following people in the first place? Yeah, of course. Yeah, like, makes sense. You know, but now that they've added that in, they've added in streams, they are very creator focused as well. You can actually even join their PVB a PVP partner program and actually become a, a Twitch PVP partner, uh, okay. which is exactly what Insanity Secure did. So she's got the, the PVP stuff uh, on her uh, stream, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And it's just really cool, the clips and all the other bits and pieces that you see people posting. It's like a Facebook group, but better like a facebook group dedicated to gaming with significantly more features features yeah Yeah. cool so i i think it's cool Uh, and again i'm not telling you to invest i just want to make that really clear because they they really they get hammered yeah it sounds like they're pushing this yeah they they are pushing uh investment now uh i don't know what they're intending to do. I'm not getting into it. But they've got what they call as collectibles, right? And I think this is another feature that lets them down. Could have been a really cool idea if it was expanded upon. And if it is going to be expanded upon further, it shouldn't have been released in this form. So as, as an example... If you are a beta user, which is basically everybody, you get a collectible or a beta badge, right? Okay. Now, obviously, this is not a physical thing. Hashtag NFT. NFT, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like a little badge that sits on your profile. And if I can show it like that, which it's not very focused, but you get the you get the idea. It's just a little badge on your PVP uh, profile. Now, they've also got a partner badge, which is cool for some Twitch streamers. They've got a verified investor badge, which, again, I'm not into, but anyway. They've got a friendly badge, so fun to play with. They've got a shot caller, so you're a good leader or organizer. And then they got one final one, and it's you're good at teamwork. Those are the six badges. Three of those badges are PVP exclusive things that if you're not a streamer or not a creator, 
You can't get one of those badges. The beta badge is fine, but you only keep the beta badge for a limited time. So once it comes out of beta, you probably lose the badge. That doesn't make any sense to me. It should be like a founder's badge or something mm. like that. Do you know what I mean? Like you were there at the start. Well, maybe that is what it'll be. Maybe it won't go away when... It literally says it's only for a limited time. Oh, it does say that. Okay. I don't so, know how I feel about collectibles no, in a I, social media. Mean, no, what I mean by that, right, what I think is a cool idea about it is if it took your achievements from the games you play and yeah. added mm. those in. So well, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, same. Yeah, but it's it's like a half assed version. Like as an example, if you have a look like at Apex trophies and stuff. I guess yeah. that the point is like so the one of the main draws to the We're sponsored yeah. by Pepsi, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah, very responsible Pepsi. Pepsi is our sponsor. <laughs> sponsor us. Nah. Yeah, so the, one of the points of the the um, app, I guess, is to find people to team up with and play with. So you're going to want to team up with the people that have like a good teamwork badge and all of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. So that, I that feel part- like it might leave players behind if they start putting the achievements from uh, the actual game in there because like, if someone is a new player and they have none, nobody's going to want to team up with them because they don't have like you know, all these good all these good achievements for the game, which mean you're a good player. You know what I mean? Yeah, which I sense. can I can definitely understand. But from my point of view, is sometimes I'd like to see those achievements. Like, why can't my if like if you want the option to do it, same as Apex Legends. If you want the option to display certain things, you can display it. So before uh-huh. you go into the before you go into the game, it'll literally say you have this many kills, you got this many of this, you got this many of that, or you can just have it come up blank, uh-huh. right? And it's clearly specifically chosen, right? Like you choose what you want to want to do, and that's what they could have done really well with this one. So, for example, if I wanted to show my KD level for Call of Duty. That's, you know, kills versus deaths for those that don't know. Yeah, if I wanted to show that, I had the ability to show that and it was verified through Activision system. I think that sort of thing would have been a really cool addition rather than having these six badges that, like, I don't don't give crap if you're friendly. (laughs) Yeah, it makes sense on a social media in a social media setting though, you know, like I, maybe they should have a, a badge that says unfriendly because I know in, they probably want everyone to assume that everyone on their side is friendly. So, yeah, but like an unfriendly one, like, you know, this person is known to abuse people on the platform probably. Yeah. Then I won't. Don't want to interact with you. Yeah. Yeah. So it may, that one makes sense less from a gamer's point of view, but more from a, a social media which is like that's what this is, right? That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, they've they've made us they've made a social media for gamers. And look, they're copping a lot of crap about the investing side of things. And mm-hmm. while I what's that? They obviously need them. Yeah, look, I, I think they're just doing a big last run at, at trying to get some cash on the board, which I don't really have an issue with. I think for what they've produced, uh, they've done a, a decent enough job for something that's still in beta. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- there is another social media that has come to my attention, uh, a gaming social media that believes that they're on the same stage as PvP. Now. Uh, it's called nerdplace.social. <laughs> I have literally no idea uh, about this. And their welcoming web page leaves a lot to be desired. They've got no app. It's, it's yep. basically Just web- a website. 
yeah, it's it's a website, so it's web based. To me, it looks more like a forum, and I sort of think forums are dead. Uh, yeah, mm, yeah. I, I, it's that's that sort of to me what it sort of. I mean, Reddit. Reddit's enough. You don't need any other forums, yeah. do you? Reddit's Reddit's it. Like it's got nobody, it covered. Nobody it's the else place. Is, it's the forum place. Yeah, yeah. It's literally got it covered. So, and so a lot of people are saying you should change to nerd place dot social. Uh, they don't have an app, which I I feel an app is absolutely necessary as your first. Port. Yeah, and today's, if you're trying to do a social, then today's yeah. day and yeah. age, yeah, uh, you I, need I think app app is first, website later. So PVP currently do not have uh, the ability for you to log on to a website and and do what you need to do. Now, okay, I do find that slightly annoying, but I. Also yeah, have uh, a, a lot of banks as well, especially digital first neo banks. They don't yep. have websites available either yet. So, okay. you know, you got up money as an example, who was the first, a lot of people say they're not, but they were the first digital bank uh, to be released. The reason they say they weren't is because they were backed by Bendigo. And that means Jack up money. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Bank. And then 86400 as an example where people actually contribute them to be number one, uh, the first digital bank, and then NAB so, actually bought them. But none of them actually have a website you can log into yet. So, and they've been out for four years, five years. So I, I think as long as PVP get their act together in terms of creating that website experience, I don't yeah. think it's a huge issue. Because so I've just looked it up. Like I'm on my phone here. I've gone into the app store, gone search PVP. It says pvp.com. Is that what I want? Yeah. So then I went onto the computer and obviously typed in pvp.com. Yeah, and you can you can it allows me to sign up and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and does that just then direct me to the application? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so I, I just wanted to make that clear because I feel yeah, like that looks could like be you can. for people that are trying to find it. Oh, it's pvp.com, but it doesn't have a website. But yeah. yeah. No, so, what so, I mean by that is so they've got a website up. in terms of about us information to yeah. which extension. They got a pretty robust frequently asked questions uh, thing as well, but you yeah. can't actually log into the social media through the website. So, I should have made that through a little bit more clear. Okay. No, but right. uh, I personally use I, I my banks right don't have a website that is very good. A couple of mm-hmm. the banks that I use, so I actually run an Android emul- emulator on my MacBook Pro. Nice. So, yeah, I circumvent that stuff. Boom. So yeah. Yeah, I, I use an Android emulator, and I so I've been running PvP through uh, Nova Player, which is which is the Android emulator that I use. And yep. to be honest, the experience Android to Apple is identical, which okay. I was quite surprised at. Usually, what it is is it's like an Apple first product ported over to Android with a really yep. shit. Port. Um, but they've actually done a decent job of of creating both. So, and, and a lot of people think that's really easy to do, and it's not. If, if natively running an app versus porting it is is a significantly different process, and it actually causes the app, especially Android. Android is a jungle. A lot of people don't understand that. Like Samsung has its own UI, HTC has its own UI. Every single Android phone has its own UI, screen size, et cetera, et cetera, that needs to be accounted for. And based on my Android emulation with PVP, uh, plus feedback from Insanity, they've done a good job of both apps so far. Especially, and again, this is key, it's in beta. So... I think it's worth people checking out if you're interested in gaming 
So if you're interested in gaming, you don't feel Facebook or, you know, Twitter is probably one of the biggest and most popular ones for gamers, uh, robust enough for you or you don't get your gaming feel, just check PvP out. Now, you don't have to sign up to anything. It is free. You don't have to sign up to anything to get your fix. Their website, like I said, is pretty robust in telling you what the app is about versus... Uh, and again, I'm not trying to bash nerdplace.social, but I, I just don't really know what it's about. I don't, I don't get it yet. Uh, look, and it is something that I'll research a, a little bit more, uh, potentially for the next episode if I find it worth talking about. But I, I still don't know what it's about, whereas PvP have you know, screenshots on their main page uh, on the website. They, you know, the first thing it says, you can watch streams, you can build a squad, you can share highlights, you can get discovered. Okay, so if you are a streamer, probably a good one to be on, but you can check out highlights. Like, like they've actually got pictures of what's going on. So you can have basically full insight before you actually sign up and go, oh yeah, you know, that's that's something that I'd be interested in. So I recommend checking it out online. Uh, I definitely, uh, again, uh, I'm not recommending anybody invest in it. I'm not saying don't, uh, but uh, financial advice is something I take extremely seriously due to my uh, finance background. So I, I don't recommend anybody investing off a random podcast or YouTube that you see on online, like don't invest because of that. Like you need to understand what you're investing in. You need to read the documentation they have for investors and decide whether or not it suits your purpose. Plain and simple. Do not invest in anything just because there's an ad or because you like the idea of it. Make sure that you've got, I'm going on again, aren't I? Just, you know, it's it's just ingrained in me because of my finance background. Just be careful, guys. Um, and, you know, not saying that they're dodge or anything like that because I've been enjoying the, the app for a little while now, two weeks. And like I said, it's my main one now. It's I like going onto the main feed, finding a couple of cool people on there. Uh, a lot of it at the moment is, hey, I'm, I'm new here. What can I do? Uh, there's a few of those coming up, but the longer I've been on here, it's it's getting better. There's a lot more happening on it, and that's just in a, in a small time time frame. So, yeah, that's that's my take. It on... Looks promising. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it looks out. Uh, very interesting. We're gonna have to. Yeah, we're gonna have to check it have out. To check it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like Pretty to be honest, like, I, there, Dan. what's that? Very informative section. I, yeah, I just, I was a little bit worried because of how many people, how many times they, are they, and how many companies are saying to invest in them. I was a little bit worried about not providing enough information and people thinking they should just sub, not just, that. just yeah. invest. So don't invest, sign up. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. So just yeah. create an account. There's just nothing wrong with it. Create an that. account and use it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. User experience comes first. Yeah, user and that's what understand. I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah. user, understand. I like, like I said, I think it's cool. You can even, it, it's it's literally like Discord and Twitch have just meshed together. That's a little yeah, bit not. of what it feels like. Um, okay. Yeah, it sounds so, good. Yeah, they, they've, done, they've done a decent job, uh, mm. I think. There's definitely parts that they could flesh out, but again, it's a beta. Mm. It's so better, yeah, so. we'll see where it goes. Yeah, yeah. time will tell. One thing I that I will note that I have been very happy about, I guess, is their support team actually actively comment on posts. So if is- somebody will actually like, I saw a post the other day where they're like, "Hey, tried to do highlights, and it's not working. Anybody got any tips?" And the support team actually jumped in and said, like, 
you know, we want to know more about what's going on. And then actually in that same post, has anybody else had any other issues? And yeah, no. I, I just thought that was really cool because, I mean, I posted, I don't, I don't have any issues because I literally did one two minutes before I saw that post uh, just to test it for this purpose. That's why I commented on the fact that the upload speed's a bit slow. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, like, you know, I've never ever seen Facebook support comment on <laughs> Jack. No, you, you don't. Know? It just doesn't and, happen. And I just like the fact that they announce new stuff and they can pin it. So they clearly have the op or like option to pin their posts. So yes. you can see that, that post up the top and they tell you all the new features, but they don't leave it up there for days. It's like a couple of days max that that post is left up there. So it's not like a reoccurring thing. So, yeah, I, I, I think they've done a good job. I'd like to see them succeed. I'd like mm. to see them go further. Just because, like I said, I, I use it. I, I use it more than I don't like Facebook. That's, <laughs> I'm just not a fan. Yeah, you know, I like looking at stuff that I, I like looking at. So, you know, gaming's fun. You see some random stuff at the moment i'm looking at a what looks like partners uh playing what's the uh, rock band so they got the guitar oh, yeah, out, yeah, they they got the drums out which is pretty cool yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah we're gonna have to make one check it out yeah absolutely that's good yeah yeah we should we should Nice one, nice one. Well, I feel like that is it for today from us. Thank you very much for sticking around and hanging out with us, enjoying our 20th episode. We'll be back next week for episode 21. Uh, just quickly at the end here, Laura and I are some kind of gaming. You can check us out on Twitch or YouTube. Dan, do your thing. Yeah, you did, don't don't worry about it. I was just trying to make that <laughs> as awkward as possible. So jump over to iDigitalGames.com and uh, yeah, grab some games. We do have uh, some semi-exciting news. Not exciting for me because I've got to pay for it. But we are at the moment, for anybody that's actually uh, affiliated with us, what we're going to roll out in the next three weeks is a basically a giveaway each week. So our game of the week will actually be a giveaway game to one of those streamers. So one of those streamers will be able to give away that game. Nice. Plus for Easter, you're going to have to find an egg on the website. Whoever finds the egg That's first fun. will get a game for free and it won't oh, be a rubbish oh. game. That's awesome. So That's a great idea. Any, uh, hints for the listeners of the podcast uh no because i haven't decided where i'm putting it yet I... oh, <laughs> it's, oh, it hasn't actually happened fair enough no no uh, maybe check back tomorrow see if the egg's no. there no because it'll be it'll be in the in the basically from good friday australian time okay. till yep. uh end of day uh easter uh us time to make it try and yep. make it as fair as possible for everybody the egg will be visible. Whoever finds it first, uh, yeah, we'll get that game. But every week, one of the game of the week will go out to one of our affiliates. So if you are affiliated with us, e.g. Tom and Laura here, uh, mm -hmm. they'll get a game to give away at one point. And we're going to roll that out to every single affiliate. We'll have a game to, to roll out each week on a giveaway. So at the moment we're trialing it with Insanity. So uh, I've mentioned her a couple of times in this podcast, but if you want to suss out a free game, we just gave away a game. Hey, okay. oh, Dead by Daylight. That's the one. We just gave oh, away. Oh, oh, nice. So, oh cool. Uh, yeah. So she, some pretty cool games. Yeah, and where she's doing it officially through Stream Elements, so that way there's a, you know, ticket purchasing process and all that sort of stuff. So once that is fleshed out, it will be basically rolled out to every 
affiliate and you'll just have to find the affiliate who has the giveaway that week. Cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, that That's is exciting. very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, look, looking forward to getting involved in that. Mm. Thanks uh, again, yeah, everybody. Awkward, not, not for some kind of gaming, though. Yeah, yeah. I'm joking. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> joking. No, they're the uh, worst. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're, they're the worst. They're so bad that we named half the podcast after them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we are some low grade gamers. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.